Hello, I'm Tristan Jakowski of the New York Historical Fencing Association, and with me today is Corey Winslow of the Medieval European Martial Arts Guild. Uh, we're here in beautiful Luray, Virginia. We have the Blue Ridge Mountains behind us, and we're going to do a little instructional video for you. So the other day I posted some pictures uh, to my Facebook page, put a link there, um, talking about a, a drill that I was doing in class with some of my students. Um, I got some cool comments, I got a lot of people telling me that, oh this is great, uh, I'm going to steal it, uh, which is all well and good, that's of course why I put them on the internet. Um, but I just wanted to provide a little bit more context for what we were uh, actually doing in class rather than just the photographs. I'm going to explain things uh, to you personally right here and right now. So um, what we were working on was kind of fundamental parrying skills, um, essentially absets, and, but we're not going to focus so much on the, the technique itself, absets, and what I'm focusing more on is the manner in which we're practicing really any technique, but we'll use this as an example. So, in a sword fight, as you know, we have two basic priorities. Stay alive, kill the other person. Now, the photographs of the drills that we were doing uh, basically showed uh, a portion of the practice for priority number two. Okay, kill the other person. So, we're going to build up to that. Uh, but first, I want to talk about priority number one. Okay, the body mechanics, the structure behind what it is you're actually doing. That way, you survive long enough to strike the other person. Without that portion, without proper body mechanics, proper structure, everything else following that is moot. Okay, so the action that we're practicing is basic parry. Um, you'll see this in the absets in section. Essentially, it's just a winding from fluke to fluke. Um, I'm going to break down how to practice this uh, in terms of body mechanics. Um, one of the important considerations here is that. Um, this only really makes any difference if you are practicing, uh, at least with the intent, to physically damage the other person. Okay? This is not necessarily going to help uh, your, your, your sport of fencing, your tournament of fencing, where really there's just contact, and then an abortion, and then other contact. Okay, We're talking about uh, defending an action where one person is with full intent trying to put their sword into the body of the other person, okay? So that requires a certain paradigm shift and a lot more uh, strength and structure behind it. Okay. Um, keep in mind the absets and um, at least this form of it in the technical term, uh, it's really dealing with thrusts, um, but of course it's also extrapolatable for cuts, at least as far as the, uh, the lower opening is concerned. Anyway, that's Either here nor there, I'm going to show you how to practice this action in complete isolation. So as many of you are probably aware, I'm a huge proponent in teaching body mechanics as part of swordsmanship. Okay, not just teaching for sport of combat, just superficial contact, but again using the sword as the weapon that it is uh, to damage, kill other people. Um, so a lot of my drills kind of match that. Uh, many people have taken my cutting mechanics workshop. Um, this is not all that dissimilar. Um, drill is very basic, okay? Um, again, Corey is going to just do the, uh, the motion in isolation to show you again, flug to flug. Now, what I'm going to do to make sure that this is, as I said before, a full body experience, not just pushing with the forearms, etc., is I'm going to provide resistance with my full body. Right here. Corey's going to do the same action with me holding on to either his hands or the sword handle in between his hands. So, you'll notice the most important thing is, of course, connection with the ground with the feet, but the hip torsion is really what powers this through. Um, if you rely just on your arms, it's very easy to push yourself over or just not do the motion itself. Um, second thing you'll notice is that Corey is not taking a step. Now, in the effect booker, yes, it says you want to step uh, in conjunction with the winding motion, uh, that's mainly a range thing, okay, you get the, uh, the, the tip threatening, and then drive it forward with the step. Um, I am a big fan of practicing these as two distinct, discrete motions, 
Ideally, you want to put them as close together as possible, but really the first priority is to make sure that you're safe behind the sword, which requires no step, connectivity with the ground. Um, again, this should be self-evident, but we'll demonstrate, okay, if you do try to step while doing this winding against resistance, you just push yourself over. So that's the first drill in a nutshell. We'll give you a few details in just a moment. One thing that's important is the direction that you're offering resistance. Okay, you don't want to just be off to the side of the person because you also want to have them spiral outwards. That way the action isn't just purely defensive but also starts to threaten me as well. So again, I'm not going to resist here but along this line. Okay, so the second drill is related to the second priority, which is threaten the other person. For this, simply, I'm just gonna make a hole with my hands. This is essentially just a tip control exercise. Now, one important detail with this, in terms of practicing, is don't do this. Because you'll stab your partner in the face. However, don't also do this, because now you're aiming to miss. Okay, the best policy is to keep it in a line with your face, but far away, that way they don't actually stab you. And that's it. Now, the other detail is, just because you're focusing on tip control and keeping that, uh, the, the, the tolerance is very tight, doesn't mean that you get to forget all the other stuff we were doing before. Again, connectivity with the ground, hip torsion providing the actual strength laterally to protect against strikes. It's very easy just to rely on minimal forearm motion to keep within the target. But again, then you're just practicing to hit the other person, not protect your own body behind it. In terms of tolerances for this, depending on how expert your practice partner is at this, you can make it small, you can make it large. What I'm mainly concerned with is that they are not relying on the rim of your fingers to keep the tip in place. Okay, so contact here is okay. Pressure, not okay. Okay, third thing, third drill, this is the last drill, is just application. Now, um, of course, ab sets and works both against thrusts and against cuts. Um, it doesn't really matter, uh, but for the purposes of the drill, um, I've been using cuts to the lower opening, uh, simply because there is a, a more force involved. Again, it's more resistance for the other person to work against. Um, so, again, this is very straightforward. Uh, specifically, I'm targeting the lower opening, by this I mean kind of base of the ribs, um, just so I don't force my practice partner Corey here to go up to Ox. It's not to say that you can't also do this to Ox, but it's simply not what we're working on right now. We'll extrapolate that later. One more small detail here is that with that cut, continue kind of pressing that cut. What I mean by this is that don't just, again, aim for superficial contact, blade on blade. Remember, you're trying to strike the person behind the sword. So from here, continue that pressure inwards towards that same opening. Don't allow the, the student or your practice partner to do any other action that would otherwise cause them to win the exchange. Again, this is a cooperative exercise, so the person in my role has to fail for the other person to practice their technique. However, I have to fail in a very specific way. That way they're practicing the correct technique. Well, I hope this video uh, provided some more context for those pictures that so many people liked. 
Uh, thank you again to Corey Winslow of Mimag uh, for inviting me out to this beautiful wilderness to, to shoot. Um, subscribe to both our channels. Uh, you can find us both on Facebook. And thank you for watching.